There are several reasons why scientists may decide to run a Western blot in lieu of other techniques that might also allow them to detect proteins. For example, we're going to be able to detect one specific protein from any biological sample. That on its own, it's impressive. In addition to that, if you properly optimize your technique and use the proper controls, the Western blot can be extremely sensitive. And by the way, if you need help optimizing your protocol, we do have a whole series of courses on that, so don't forget to use those LambdaU resources too. Now, let's say that you want to run a Western blot and you want to be able to detect multiple targets in one membrane. When we use fluorescent dyes, especially near-infrared fluorescence, we're going to be able to multiplex several targets in one membrane, even two targets that have the same molecular weight that overlap, such as a phospho and a total target. If you also use validated um, internal loading controls, you're going to be able to estimate the relative protein concentration on any given biological sample. With the aid of a molecular weight marker, we're going to be able to estimate the size or the molecular weight of that protein. Now, you may think that perhaps the initial investment for you to be able to run a Western blot in your lab might be a little high because you probably want to purchase a Western blot imager. But if we think about the fantastic data that you can get out of a Western blot and how the day-to-day -day technique, the reagents that you use are really not expensive, it's typically a very good investment. And that's one of the reasons why labs around the world run Western blots on a routine basis. Now, there's one more thing that I find very interesting, which is that Western blots are also used on a clinical setting. Yeah, that's right. Western blots are used not only to understand diseases and different pathways, but they're also used in the clinic to come up with different treatment plans for several diseases. So let's think about all of that. With a Western blot, you can detect specific proteins, you can achieve great sensitivity, you can multiplex several targets in one membrane, you can estimate relative protein concentration, you can also estimate size. It's a fairly cheap technique, and it can be used in a translational setting. So overall, Western blots are a great technique. Just like any other technique, there's certain things that you may want to take into consideration when you're thinking about running a Western blot. For starters, it does have several steps, therefore it can be a little time consuming and even tedious. A Western blot is probably going to take you more than a day, probably two or three, to go through the entire protocol carefully. Because of all those steps, that are, there's a lot of potential variability in that technique. What that means to you is that you're going to have to optimize all of those steps so that you can have great quality data. You may need to optimize the type of gel you're using, how much protein you're loading, the transfer time, and so on. And even then, we're still going to have intrinsic variability. But in reality, we have intrinsic variability in everything that we do in the lab. It's just something we have to deal with and minimize it as much as possible. Some of the main steps in the Western blot that have that intrinsic variability are the fact that you're extracting proteins and the fact that we're going to have to transfer them to a membrane. Now, if you really want to increase your reproducibility, there are other techniques that you may also want to take into consideration, such as in-cell Western, in which you skip exactly those two steps, the protein extraction and the transfer onto a membrane. If you want to learn more about that technique, we'll have a link for it at the end of this course. So let's review that. What do I have to think about when I'm planning and preparing to run a Western blot? It's going to be time consuming. I want to be ready for that. I really want to optimize the assay so I can reduce variability and I need to be ready to deal with that intrinsic variability. Now, if you ask me, in my humble personal opinion, I think there's way more pros than cons in running a Western blot. If you take your time to optimize it properly, you're going to end up with fantastic data that's really going to help move your project forward. So what we're going to do next over the next series of courses is we're going to go over the Western blot protocol step by step, talking not only about the science behind all those steps, but also the best practices. And we're also going to show you a video of a Western blot being done in the lab for all of those steps. So stay tuned and I'll see you on the next one.